Hello Internet! It's me, Alex from Barefaced, and here I am to educate you about Celestian guitar speakers and try and demystify what, on first impressions, is um, a massively complicated and confusing thing. So, guitar speakers are inherently non-linear devices. They do not behave like most other speakers that are used in the modern world. Um, if you try to make them behave like most speakers in the modern world, they don't sound like guitar speakers. They are Electric guitar needs the colorations caused by the inherent non-linearities of guitar speakers. So, here's a bit of a history lesson. The Celestian Blue, Alnico, that's essentially the first guitar speaker that Celestian were making, and it's based on a speak from a radiogram or a radio, something like that. So it's, it's an old 1950s speaker design. Now, it's got a very light cone, it's got a very light voice coil. It's very honest under very small signals, but as soon as you put more power into it, that light cone flexes, that small voice coil goes beyond its sort of linear motion, and it creates very distinct coloration, very distinct character. The other thing that happens with Alnico magnets is Alnico is not a very stiff magnetic material. So when you make a permanent magnet, some permanent magnet, magnetic materials are very, create a very rigid magnetic field and some of them create a much more soft magnetic field. Alnico creates quite a soft magnetic field. So when a voice coil has current running through it and creates its own electromagnet, that electromagnet pushes back against the magnetism of the Alnico magnet in this case, and that Alnico magnet actually weakens when it's being pushed. What that means is that you get a subtle compression effect which sort of rounds off the edges, smooths off the edges, and it's that that happens with Alnico magnets that makes Alnico magnet drivers sound very nice on guitar. It sort of softens things up, it sweetens things up. Um, it's a great sound for quite a lot of guitarists. The downside is that Alnico is a much more expensive magnetic material than the ferrite ceramic magnets that are used in most speakers. We also have neodymium magnets, they're also expensive, um, and they're actually a stiffer, stronger magnet than a ceramic magnet. So the Alnico is kind of a, a friendly guitar, friendly sounding magnet. So, if we look at the Alnico range, we have four Celestian Alnico 12s, the blue, the ruby, the gold, and the cream. What happens as we go between those is simply that the cone gets stiffer, so the cone flexes less under greater load, and the cone power handling goes up. When I say the cone's power handling, it's the voice call's power handling is increasing, that's the thermal power handling but Celestian are stiffening the cone to withstand the greater dynamic load upon that cone. So basically, a ruby will take more power to break up than a blue, gold takes more power to break up than a ruby, cream takes more power to break up than a gold. So you can essentially scale what you need in terms of how loud you want to play and what amp you're using with it to match. So that's what's happening here, and as you increase the power handling of the speaker, in this case, you're also tending to increase the bottom end by a bit because you're making the cone heavier, and the process of doing that is also losing a bit of the treble detail and mid-range sort of accuracy and precision. So the cream is not as detailed as the blue, it's sort of smoother, fatter sounding speaker, but if you put 90 watts into a blue, like a cream can handle, you just toast it. Also, if you try to put much more than 15 watts into a blue, it's going to get into a realm of being more broken up, a kind of dirtier sounding, and it will go beyond that sort of sweet spot of dirtiness that guitarists are craving from the speaker's dirt. You may be putting dirt in from fuzz pedals, distortion pedals, breaking up valve amps. But the speaker breakup, there is a certain point where it goes into horrible, pointless mushiness essentially. So there's a sort of optimum amount of dirt that we want to generate within a guitar loudspeaker. So that's the Alnico posse, as it were.
They're all very expensive drivers. You know, there's no way around it. Alnico is an expensive magnetic material. It's not used much in anything other than high-end esoteric guitar speakers and there may be some heritage hi-fi speakers that use a bit of Alnico, but there's not really much demand for it. There are cheaper ways to do better magnets, but the deficiencies of an Alnico magnet sounds good in a guitar driver. So they're essentially sort of 50s-ish sounding speakers. Now over here, we have this thing here, the G12M Heritage, which is a green back. That is really the original Celestian rock speaker. So that's the sound of the early 60s in your classic sort of British sound. I wouldn't really characterize these as your classic British sound. It is the Vox sound, these Alico things, but it is not the Marshall sound, which I think is what more people tend to associate as the British sound. Now to explain why we use a Vintage 30 as the default speaker, in the barefaced ABD 12 inch range. The Vintage 30 was the result of Celestian trying to develop a ceramic speaker that behaved like their Alnico range. So it sort of sits around here, sounding you know, more like a gold than anything. It doesn't have the detail of the blue. So think of the Vintage 30 as a ceramic Celestian gold. It's a very loud speaker. These are 100 dB sensitivity. This is 100 dB sensitivity. So that's, you've got a lot of magnetic flux there, which means when you put the electricity into it, it turns into more output than if you had a smaller magnet. It's got a fair bit of power handling, 60 watts. It's got a lot of clarity. The complaint that people occasionally have about the Vintage 30 is that it can be harsh in the highs. So that's because it's got the sort of frequency response of these Alnico drivers. So it's got a lot of output in the highs and the mids as well as the lows. There, there aren't really any gaps in the response, but because it hasn't got the Alnico magnet softening the edges of the sound, it will not sound as sweet as an Alnico speaker. The upside is that it will cut through a mix very well and it will take a lot of different sounds. So you can put a lot of different things into it and get a little, lot of different sounds out and you can throw a lot of effects at it and actually hear what's happening instead of it sort of vanishing into a generic sort of sound. Um, and it's got a lot of output because it's 100 dB sensitivity and 60 watts so that creates a, a lot of output. Just to give you an idea, if you go from 100 dB sensitivity down to 97 dB sensitivity, that's equivalent to halving your power handling in terms of the loss in maximum output. So that's your Vintage 30. Also the upside of the Vintage 30 versus these Alnicos is it costs an awful lot less. Not such an issue with a 112, but more of an issue with a 212 um, because obviously more speakers, more cost. So these are the British sounding, your sort of classic 60s sounding British speakers. We've got the G12M Heritage, then the G12M Greenback, so the slight difference between these two is that this is less sensitive and handles a bit less power. So if you want the 60s sound, but without having to crank it up to classic 60s rock band levels like Cream or someone like that, you can use one of those in a Reformer 112 and you will get awesome, big, fat sound, but it will break up at a much more reasonable level. It's great, great speaker for recording, great speaker for home use certainly still a viable gigging speaker in an efficient cab like a reformer but it's a great one to choose if you're used to gigging with something bigger and you want something you can enjoy at home and it doesn't sound like some poxy little practice amp. Then we've got the cream back. The cream back is basically a green back with more power handling so it evolved from the green back to handle people needing to play louder and these getting blown a lot of course the heritage is more similar to the original speaker but this is the slightly more affordable version of, of the greenback which has got a few updates with a little more sensitivity on the current greenback a little more power handling but the creamback we have more power handling slight loss in sensitivity there so creamback isn't going to go all that much louder than the greenback but it is going to be more robust. So you can stick two of those into a 212, then you've got 130 watts power handling, you can stick a 100 watt head on it without worrying about it. This other animal, the Neo Cream Back, 
Again, because you've changed not just the magnet material, but neodymium magnets are much smaller, so you're changing the whole geometry of the motor, and because of the non-linearity and weirdnesses of guitar speakers, you can't change something like that and not affect the sound in other ways. So the Neo Cream Back does not sound identical to the ceramic magnet Cream Back, but it sounds pretty close. And the joy of the Neo Cream Back is it weighs absolutely nothing. So if you put it in a lightweight cab like our Reformer, our Radical, our Uprising, you have an insanely light and great sounding combination. So that's something to bear in mind if you really want the lightest possible awesome sounding rock cab, because I would say these, these really are your rock and blues sort of speakers. You're doing um, you know, other stuff, older stuff or different stuff going sideways. You know, we have all these other animals. Now you may have noticed this little thing sitting on its own. This is the V-type. So if the Vintage 30 is what happens when you try to make a ceramic magnet version of your El Nico classics, the V-type is what happens when you say, well, the Vintage 30's got a bit too much clarity for my liking, it's a bit too harsh, a bit too bright, a bit too forward in the mids, but these G12Ms are a bit too muddy, for want of a better word, with the sort of tone you're putting into them. So they're, they're smoother and mellower, maybe wanting more dirty sounds into them, things like that. Uh, maybe wanting you know just a bit more overdrive to bring up that brightness in or that punch in the mids. The V-type is a halfway house between a Vintage 30 and the G12Ms sort of family. Obviously these don't all sound identical but they are in a family of sounds. So that's a good one to choose if that's too in your face and these aren't in your face enough. You've got the V-type. Now going down here, this H here signifies heavy magnet. So M, I don't know, medium-sized magnet, but anyway, that's the lighter magnet, this is the heavier magnet. Now, when you put a heavy magnet on a loudspeaker, that increases the magnetic flux through the voice call, so that means when current flows through there, the speaker moves more. Many people assume that heavy equals lows, you know, heavy equals more bottom end, and that's not how it works. When you increase the magnetic flux within a speaker and you don't change anything else, you actually get less bottom end, um, you're over damping the design. So these G12Hs, they have more going on in the mids, they have more going on in the highs, they are fundamentally louder, but they are tighter sounding in the lows, they do not have as big bottom relatively as the G12Ms, they're not as warm sounding but they do have more output. So here we're looking at sort of 96, 98, 97 dB sensitivity. This family are all 100 dB sensitivity. So going from 97 to 100, that's like doubling your power handling in terms of the output you can get. These three, all 30 watts power handling. So it's got a bigger magnet, but it doesn't handle any more power really than these greenbacks here at sort of 20, 25 watts. I mean, there's really very little in it. The 55, confusingly, that 55 does not relate to power handling, that relates to the resonant frequency of the, people say the cone, it's the, it's, the, it's the cone suspension unit, it's the resonant frequency of the moving parts of the loudspeaker. 75, that again is the resonant frequency there. Basically this one has a chunkier, fatter sound, this has got more top end, in many ways this is your rhythm guitar speaker, this is your lead guitar speaker, that's, that's what historically they've often been used for. These heritage ones, they're not called the greenback and the greenback, but they're painted like that, so they, they are, they relate to the greenback and greenback concept. The 75 here does relate to power handling, so that 75 in brackets is the, frequent, is the uh, fundamental frequency, the FS of the loudspeaker, that 75 there is the power handling, which is sort of an RMS rating. It's, it's a bit more complex than that with Celestian speakers because they're power rated in the sort of pro audio sense for that, but they are also rated, they're also designed so that the cone stiffness and the suspension behavior means they're going to hit those, that sort of optimum breakup at the right power level for that. So if you've got a speaker that's got 75 watt power handling versus 30 watts, it's going to handle 
over two times as much power, two and a half times as much power before it hits that tonal sweet spot. So the downside of that is you'll need more power to get to that sweet spot. The upside of it is you can take more power to get to that sweet spot so it'll sound better with louder amps or amps that are being pushed harder. The G12H 150 Redback, that is an even higher power handling version. Now as you go in this direction, particularly to this one and this one, from these, that to that to that, we are going towards a fatter, bigger, thicker, smoother sound because simply we're going for a heavier cone, a heavier voice coil, and we're losing a bit of top end detail and we're getting a bit more bottom end. Now, what's really nice about that is if you put one, if you've got one speaker and then you put a second speaker into, with it, that makes the sound bigger and fatter and smoother. And if you then add more speakers, it keeps doing that. So when you go from a 112 to a 412, the inherent change in sound is a smoothing out, a fattening, an embiggening of the sound. If you do the same here, 55 to the 75 to the, no, that 55 is at 30 watt speaker. So from the G12H Heritage Greenback to the Creamback to the Redback, it is very similar to going from a 112 to a 212 to a 412. It's not as extreme a change, but it does mean that if you want a huge sound in a small enclosure, stick one of those, a red back, in a 112, and you're going to have something that behaves more like a 212 or a 412. Combine that with barefaced AVD design, and you can get a seriously weighty, huge sounding and very loud speaker in a very small enclosure. So 112 can do an awful lot, and you can put a big amp on that. It's a 150 watt rated speaker. It's not going to break up until you're at five times the power level of these 30 watt beasts. And it will sound fatter and bigger in the process. So if these could be thought of as more of your early 60s speakers, these are almost your sort of later 60s speakers. They're just, just the guitar is getting, it's being pushed more isn't it? You, you, we, we all know how rock developed in the 60s, and these are really rock animals, and also the way that sort of blues crosses over with rock, and everything has been, you know, funkadelic type funk, or um, soul playing, or R&B playing. There, there's a, it's, it's a sort of cross-pollination, but as we know, electric guitar and its, its development is very closely tied with 60s and 70s rock music. Now this group here, these really are our speakers that are more live in the land of always dirty sounds. So this is your 80s guitar rock speaker, and these are progressively going towards even more power handling and output. This is brighter and more in your face. These three, very much more mellow in the top end because they're assuming you're putting in a sound with a lot of gain, so you've got a lot of distortion that's producing a lot of highs, so you need a speaker that's going to filter out those highs so it doesn't end up harsh. So again, these animals are, these are, yeah, a land of 80s and onwards rock, 80s and 90s rock one could say. So there's a sort of historical development through here, you're sort of travelling, yeah, you kind of are travelling in this direction. And then we've got these two oddities down here. The A-type is an American sounding Celestian, so it's going for that sort of Fendery sound. It does make life very easy because if you know about Fender speakers, Jensen speakers, all those American sounding speakers, you'll know there is just as many choice in American sounding speakers as there are in British sounding speakers, but at the moment we're getting all our speakers from Celestian because they make great speakers and it logistically works well with what we're doing at Barefaced, and as you can see we offer a lot more choice than most manufacturers when it comes to having you know, so many different speakers in our caps. But when it comes to American sounds, you can have the A-Type. There we are, nice and simple. It's a great sounding speaker, I really like it. Um, it's got reasonable power handling, 50 watts, so plenty for most situations now that people are downsizing from massive amps. And plenty of sensitivity, but conversely, it doesn't need to be driven really hard. Now this thing down here, <clears throat> the Neo 250 Compact, yes, that handles 250 watts, which is pretty cool. It's 100 dB sensitivity, 
So if you combine that 100 dB sensitivity with the 250 watt power handling, you've definitely got the loudest speaker here out of all of these, even louder than the G12H 150 Redback. But what separates this from everything else here is that these all sound like guitar speakers, but this doesn't. This sounds more like a PA mid-bass driver or actually like the EVM 12L, which is an iconic guitar speaker, which is iconic because although it's a guitar speaker, it's not very guitar speaker sounding, if it's very honest. It rolls off in the highs, so you don't get that sort of harshness because it, you know, it's a 12, a 12 can only go so high. But it, it's very honest, it's very present. If you want to create really new, innovative guitar sounds, it's great for that. It's also great for really heavy things because it'll handle a lot of power. And it's got a neodymium magnet, so it weighs nothing. So if you want absolute maximum output from a guitar speaker, put one of those in a Bareface Reformer 112 AVD cab, and you will have something like sort of 412 equivalent output. Put it in a 212, and you've really got, you know, the proper metal beast, you know, it'll hang in a loud grunge, metal, whatever these genres are getting called nowadays, because everyone likes to create new genres and new pigeonholes, especially in the world of metal, don't they? Um, I've been there. So hopefully this is making some more sense now that I've grouped the different Celestians in their different ways, and we've got this this travelling within the groups as the power handling increases to needing more power to break up but also being able to choose things with lower sensitivity if you want to uh, break up at lower levels or lower power handling for break up at lower levels and also you've got this increased smoothness and fatness as you head towards increased power handling within the groups on the whole. So my questions for you, because presumably you've played quite a few of these speakers, is which of these have you used? Which of these do you like? Which of these do you use at the moment? If you use different ones for different situations, I'd like to know why. And also your experiences of how they compare to each other. And if you've tried any of these in one of our own AVD cabs, I'd be very interested to hear what you've made of it. And also if you've heard these, any of these different ones, I mean, presumably most of you buying a barefaced AVD cab have got vintage 30s in it because that's the stock speaker, the default speaker, but we have been supplying all, I think we've probably sold cabs with all of these in, I'm sure we have, um, to people out there though. Whether you're watching this, I do not know. But I'd like to know how you found these have compared in an AVD cab to in a conventional cab. So yes, add some comments and let me know what you think about my explanation of the strange and complex and very much historical world of Celestian guitar loudspeakers of 12 inch diameter. I can do a short video of this for 10 inch ones, but I thought I'd start with the big one. So thank you. Let me know, comment. I am very curious what you guitar people have found and learnt and can share with me and with each other. And also let me know what you would like me to cover next, because it's quite interesting stuff, this. So thank you, goodbye, I'll see you soon. I'm Alex from Barefaced, and we make cool stuff. Yes, thank you.